Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to go into more detail on the EG4 6000 XP here. So I'm going to talk more about the specs, show you guys some other menu options on here. I can show you the monitoring app and do some load testing also. So I'm going to get started here in just a minute. So the first thing I wanted to cover was PV voltage, so solar voltage. So the max VOC limit on here, the voltage limit, is 480 volts. But the usable voltage is 385, I think. So you've got a range of 120 volts. So you have to be a minimum of 120 volts for the unit to even recognize the solar. And it goes up to 385. That's the usable voltage. And just in case you're new to solar, there, there's calculators you can use to figure out how much your voltage will spike in cold weather because it, it does spike in cold weather. It goes up in cold weather. So some of those northern states are going to have a real noticeable spike in their uh, panel voltage. Around here, I leave myself around 50 volts of headroom. So I try to, try to stay below 50 volts below what the maximum limit is just for that uh, temperature coefficient. But again, there is calculators online that uh, can help you to figure all that out if you type all the specs for your panel into them. So depending on what kind of panels you get, the specs on the panels is going to depend on how you wire this. So uh, you can go over that with Signature Solar, but you can also just look at the specs on the manual, on the spec sheet, and look at the specs on what panels you want to get or the panels you have and figure it out there. So two of my larger arrays, the voltage on the panels, uh, I think it's around 49. It's 49 some change volts per panel. So I wouldn't want to run 10 of them. They're 400 watt panels. So that would get me the 8,000 watts usable uh, wattage on the unit here, but I wouldn't want to run 10 of them at once. I'd be right at that maximum voltage for the unit. So with those panels, those bifacial panels that I have, I would probably run nine in series with this. So I would be, what, 800 watts shy of the maximum wattage for this unit with those particular panels. But I have a smaller array on top of my shop roof. Those are 450 watt panels and those are only 41 volts, uh, but the amperage is slightly higher. So yeah, it's really going to depend on which panels you get. If I used uh, the 450 watt panels I have to wire in here, you could actually get above the wattage limit on this unit with those. So yeah, look at the specs on the panels. Uh, if you're getting this inverter uh, and you're going to get panels new, you're going to get everything new, uh, or even used panels, then make sure to look at the specs for that if you're wanting to, wa to max the wattage out for the unit here. So here's what the app looks like very simple to use and you can see all the info you would want to see on here and then I'll go over here in a second and show you the settings that you can look at also. There's also a data section where you can see total consumption and uh, your different solar input and all that for the week, month, year, whatever. So yeah, if you're into graphs and stuff like that, there's all that is there as well. So idle consumption is something I wanted to add in this one. We're at 53 volts, and that would be times 1 amp, 1.1. So that puts us, and I can add that up, but you're somewhere at like 54 watts, something like that. All right, so if we go to menu and go to option 20, there's a power saving mode on that. enabled yeah so that's probably what most people will do they'll keep it in that eco mode there's not really a downside so you can keep it in there if you don't have any loads on it's actually looking like it's probably in the 30 watt range with that um, but otherwise it was in the low 50s with without the eco mode on but uh, yeah i would just keep this setting on setting 20 keep that enabled so setting 24 is a fan setting. So I actually have a mini split running on the unit right now. So it's got a fairly good load on it already and some other items actually. But so if you go to fan settings, it's automatically at 70. It's set at. So that's, I'll set it to 100. And we'll see if we can, it has a slope. So in other words, it ramps up. So if you disable the slope, and there's fan two. We can set that at 100 also. And disable the slope there. Not sure if you guys can hear it. There's actually a lot of rain outside. 
but you can hear the fans ramp up. So fan one and two, there's three fans over here. Let me disconnect this. this out. So they're all running faster. So the unit's not gonna let itself overheat, but there is, you can adjust it. A couple other settings I wanted to mention. I was starting to edit the video and then I realized these might be uh, interesting to people. So I'll add this in here. This is setting 19 is solar only. So it'll use solar for all the loads rather than battery or your grid or generator for that matter. But it does explain in the manual how, you know, you may not get a consistent voltage. You know, if it goes behind, if the uh, sun goes behind the clouds or something like that, you're obviously not going to get consistent voltage. With a full sun day, this may be an interesting test, especially if you had around 6,000 watts of solar coming in to test if you can see if you can get a uh, 6,000 watt output out of the sun. Another setting I thought might be interesting to people is setting 26. You can enable or disable the ground neutral bond here right with the software. So if you guys have had it, any of the older inverters or any of the older equipment where you've had to remove bonding screws or anything like that, you won't have any of those issues with this inverter. And since I'm editing this in last, I'm gonna throw this in here. Somebody asked me, or actually I've had a few questions about whether there's any issue with this inverter on dimmer switches, or if there's any strobing or flashing on LED lights or anything with this inverter, and there's none. So I could, uh, I could try to patch that into the video and just show you a picture of a light bulb, but no, there's no, there's no problems with flashing or any kind of odd dimming or anything with this and LED lights or dimmers. All right, so sound or noise level. So this is something a lot of people ask about. This unit is overall pretty quiet. So when it's idling, uh, the fans turn off unless it needs to cool itself. Uh, and as you ramp up with that slope option that I mentioned, it's going to ramp up with it. So that's going to that's gonna go up with the unit, and obviously, I've said this before about the 18 kPV, but it is not, it's not a ninja, right? It does need to make some noise as it cools the unit. So as it gets uh, more PV in or as you're using more, it is going to make more noise. Uh, if you're comparing them uh, to the 18 kPV, uh, the 18 kPV is probably a little quieter because a lot of the time it not, doesn't make any noise at all because it has to be 6,000 watts of solar coming in or using 6,000 watts. Uh, this unit, uh, it's smaller, so you're going to have, you know, the more, as you, even if you're using 1,000 watts, the fans are up there a little bit. If you're comparing them to a 6,500, they are, it's way, way quieter than that. Those had fans running nonstop and then got like a jet engine when... Uh, full PV was coming in. Again, this does this does ramp up also. Um, this 6000 EX, so the uh, the transformer based one, the split phase that they had before this, um, was very loud also. So this is much quieter than that. Also, that one when AC power kicked in, the transformer inside sounded like it was trying to get out of the case, like it would <laughs> it would bang. So you don't have any of that that with this unit. So noise wise. Uh, they are much quieter than some of the previous units. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it's bad at all. So I mentioned in the last video about wanting to know how easy it was to parallel the units. So there's a setting, setting 21, and uh, seems pretty simple there. And I'll actually, I'll tag a channel in the description or put it up at the top of the screen there so you guys can see. Adventures of a Renaissance Man. Um, and he goes over paralleling the two units that he has, these 6,000 XPs. And essentially, he plugged them in and used setting 21, and they were communicating right away. And better still, um, he's even been testing it. He told me um, he shut one unit down, you know, just to see how, because with the 6500s, since they were both providing a leg, when one unit went down, basically you lost all power. It didn't just one run uh, one leg, you lost everything. But with these units, when he would shut one unit off, it would continue to run at least the 6,000 watts still. So that's really good news too. If you had a failure, you're gonna at least have that 6,000 watt input still. And yeah, it's a cool channel, so check it out. He's done noise testing for this unit and lots of other stuff for it. 
So ultimately, other than being interested in just seeing new gear, people are wanting to know whether this is worth buying, probably. I mean, if they're interested in going off grid and this being at such a good price point, people want to know if it's worth purchasing. And based off the testing I've done and that I've seen other people do, I'd say yes. I mean, this is a solid unit for sure. And one of my only minor gripes about the unit was the LCD screen. So I mentioned this in my last video, how it looked a little busy. So it would be nice if it were broken down a little bit more so it would, uh, I guess, be easier to digest. <laughs> kind of like the 18K PV, so I'll see if I can put both of them up there so you can see the difference. But it wouldn't necessarily need to be color. Uh, that doesn't really matter, just as long as you can see all the numbers, whether, like I mentioned in the last video, whether you want to choose to see either all wattage or all amperage or, I don't know, mix and match. But anyway, I talked to EG4 and they said Lux Power is actually going to be coming out with an update for the LCD screen. So it wasn't a deal breaker before, but they're going to be changing it and improving it. And that is another thing I really like about Lux Power, not just the quality aspect of it, but that they are always improving. They're always tweaking things and uh, you know trying to improve the products that they have. So yeah, I mean, this can be a backup generator. So you can feed your critical loads panel, all of your loads, your well, your fridges and everything that you wanna feed. You can actually do a lot more than you'd think with 6,000 watts. Um, and that can feed that 24 hours a day if seven days a week, really. But if you if you have a lot of rain or whatever, this can uh, bypass. So the grid can go through this to the critical loads panel that that's been feeding if the batteries get low. Also, with the remote monitoring, if you see a storm is going to come and the batteries aren't full and you're saying, you know, I may lose power. I would like to charge from the grid and you're at work or whatever. You can use your cell phone and have the grid charge the batteries the rest of the way up to get it ready. So when it comes to budgeting for the system or the, the expense of the system itself, even if you don't factor in that 30% tax credit, which it, everyone should factor that in, I think, but if you just throw that out the window, the cost of a backup generator, that's what I was really wanted to get into here. If people get an automatic backup generator, which I'm not saying to not get a generator also, I'm all into redundancy. As, you know, if you have another layer down below this to be able to charge your batteries up with a charge verter or hook into this, I'm all about generators as well, but if you're looking at an automatic backup generator and people are always asking about solar and saying, you know, what's the payoff date? I think it's good to look at these, you know, solar as a money saver if possible, but it can also be about independence or preparedness for storms or whatever. People never ask what the payoff date is on an automatic generator that you get installed from some company or that you installed yourself, whichever. But people never ask, you know, if you get a, a 12 kilowatt or an 8 kilowatt backup generator, they never, say, they never say, how many years will it take for the generator to pay, you know, itself off? And the reason they never ask that is because it never does pay itself off. But if they had one or two big storms and the generator ran the house for two, three days or whatever, um, they may say it really has paid for itself, although technically it never paid for itself. But these units, solar can actually pay for itself. So not only, like I was saying, is it a backup generator, but it actually can pay for itself at the same time. So not only does it save money, but you're ready for a storm or any kind of outage or long-term outage. Anyway, I wasn't wanting to go off on a rant there. I'm actually going to put some of that into a later video. But again, if you, if you kind of change your mindset on the things, uh, again, with budgeting and all that, considering that this can save money and back up your household, I think solar is actually pretty fantastic for that. All right, to do a test on one leg, I would need 25 amps on one leg to get that 3000 watts here. All right, so we're at 21 amps now. Let's see if we can kick it over the top here. 26, 31, 30 amps on one leg, 29. I'm guessing, there we go. It kicked off, so it tripped at around 30 amps. So the unit automatically restarts, or you can turn the AC input off and on and it'll restart. So let's see if that'll work. Yep. So some of the heaters and everything are still on, so we're running at 21 amps on one leg right now as it restarts. I could try to get it, it's, it's a tough spot to get it right at 25 amps and let it run. I just think it's impressive it went up to 30 on one leg. 
So the line balancing capabilities of the inverter, you know, it's 3,000 watts per leg inside one box. But uh, if it can, if, you know, kind of seesaw a little bit and go towards one, that's helpful for a load, especially if it's just starting up. If you've got a, you're starting a blender or whatever, you already got other loads on, you know it can take that surge to get things started on one single leg. All right, so you can see there that the one leg already has a little bit of amperage on it already. That's the lights. So we're going to want to see 25 amps on both sides to get 6,000 watts. And I'm going to turn my range oven on. So we'll turn one oven on and a burner and then see how high that gets us. And then we can go up from there. That's actually quite a load there. So we're probably nearly maxing things out. So maybe I'll try another burner on low, see if I can get us to the 25. There we go. <laughs> okay. 36. So we're actually probably close to 7,000 watts. I'd have to add that up. But yeah, I am just under the limit. Okay, they're cycle on again as the burners cycle on, so we are well above the limit. And then we cycle back down with the range. So I might have to keep testing this and see if I can get a load. Wow, look at that thing, 36. And then when it cycles on, it's good again. Um, I might have to test this and see if I can get a load where um, I get a consistent, and that's tough to get a resistive load where you can get a consistent, you know, um, load on there to, to continue on. Obviously the thing's pretty tough. It's it's able to cycle all the way up to 36 amps per leg. Oh, this went... Oh, that was one of these. 36 amps per leg and then drop back down to 23, 24. Yeah. And you can hear it. Let me get close to the fans. You can hear the unit. Like you can definitely hear it ramp up. So there is other things I want to test on the unit, so I'll try to roll that into another video. I know people have been asking me about RFI, radio frequency interference, and if it's high or low near the unit. So uh, it's not something super common, but people that are using sensitive equipment or ham radios, stuff like that, want to know. So I'm going to try to put that in another video, find something to test that with. And I've got some other items I want to put on another one too. So thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned.